this video is going to explore some of the concepts surrounding flexible working and flexibility within the workplace. Um, back in the 1980s or prior to around about the mid 1980s, it was normal that people went into the workplace, they were there full time and they had permanent employment. But around about mid 1980s, Atkinson developed a, a model called the flexible firm. And we're going to go into that in a little bit more detail. But the purpose of this video, this recording, is to take you through what flexibility means in the workplace, um, what that might look like in terms of how we set up working practices, what employers are looking for in terms of flexibility, what employees are looking for as well, and taking it from what it was like in the 1980s when these concepts first started to emerge. Think about things like women continuing to work in the workplace um, after they perhaps have a family, looking for part-time working, companies perhaps also looking to have employees on fixed term contracts and temporary contracts. So we started to see a change in employment practices and it moved from there to what we have today, particularly in light of COVID with many more people working from home employees starting to think about do I actually want to go back to being office based permanently or being in the workplace permanently um, and employers questioning whether or not they're actually going to need the same kind of office space is it necessary so the work practices are changing again so there's perhaps a big move of away from full time to part time working temporary contracts in the 1980s and 1990s. Now, because of COVID, the whole world of work is being reassessed again. Um, and one of the other key concepts that comes in with flexible working is the drive or the, the search for a work-life balance that many employees are looking for and employers are looking to see how they can make sure that they're providing that to their employers, employees rather. So this video is going to look at all of these different concepts and put things into context for you in, in some way, hopefully. So overall, this video is going to look at an idea of what is flexibility, looking at different types of contract types, look at the psychological contract and its relationship with flexibility and the impact that flexibility or the offering of flexibility or the creation of a flexible working environment, the impact that can have on the psychological contract, whether that's positive or negative. And also linked to that thinking about how um, flexible working and flexible work practices can impact on performance within the organisation because obviously from a company's point of view you're wanting to introduce flexible working practices to enhance productivity, to improve efficiency so that you don't have people sitting about when there's not actually any work for them to do. So you're trying to do things as efficiently as possible so you're looking to improve performance but if employees feel that they're being badly treated that will also impact on performance and productivity so companies have to think about these things so we'll finish off the video by looking at that in a little bit of detail as well so what is flexibility and i think given what we are going through just now with covid the the amount of flexibility that's going to be in the workplace in the future is probably far greater and happening much more rapidly than it has up to this point. There were moves to more agile working, hot desking, more and more people working remotely, working from home, rather than being at a desk in a workplace Monday to Friday or whatever contracted hours that you're supposed to be at work. Um, <clears throat> so even before COVID hit, that increase was starting to happen. Um, but flexible working can mean all sorts of different things. It can mean how we work, where we work, um, how we determine how much control we have over our jobs, how we determine what to do, when to do it. But it's also from a company's point of view or an employer's point of view, it can be down to the type of contracts that you employ people under. So. 
permanent full-time contracts, but equally you could have people on fixed-term contracts, temporary contracts, you could be employing agency workers, you could be employing people on zero-hours contracts. Um, another fairly recent evolution in terms of employment practices would be the gig economy. So all of these different ways of working, different ways of employing people, um, but even just thinking about if you've got someone who is employed for a set number of hours, whether that's full-time or part-time, you can have condensed hours, you can have term time hours, all sorts of different ways that you actually structure how the work is done and how things are managed to control having people in the workplace when you need them, having not paying wages when you don't have to, but that you have a pool of employees that you can pull in if you need to get more work done more quickly. So flexibility is all of these different things. It's about management, being able to manage the employees, the workers within the organisation so that they're able to maximise efficiency, maximise productivity. But for the employee, it's also about them being able to work in a pattern that suits them. We're always told that or given the impression that zero hours contracts, the gig economy are bad things that employees are um, manipulated, that they're abused and they're badly treated by employers. And yes, there are some employers out there that will abuse the systems, but there are also some employees who are working under these contracts that that's actually what they want. They're looking for that flexibility. They're looking for the fact that they don't have to give a commitment to going into work for 35 hours a week, every single week. They can pick and choose when they want to work. So that flexibility is key for the employer and for the employee. So from there, as I said at the beginning, um, mid-1980s, Atkinson designed what you see in front of you as a flexible firm. And I am going to make another video that will go into the flexible firm in much more detail. But what I really wanted to talk about here was the idea that um, Atkinson realised that for companies to be efficient and to be able to manage the workforce as efficiently as possible, you don't just want key core workers that are your most highly skilled, the ones that you don't want to lose, they're the ones that are doing the fundamental business of the organisation, so they're your frontline staff. And you want to keep them on board, you want to keep them motivated, engaged and working, so you're more likely to give them better working conditions, you're more likely to pay them much more effectively. But surrounding that, you have almost like a support network of periphery workers who are important to the organisation, but um, they're the ones that if you need to make cutbacks, they're the ones that are going to get their hours cut or they could be temporary workers, they could be working for agency staff. So that's where your flexibility is coming from. So atypical working contracts, really what I'm meaning is contracts that are not your standard nine to five, Monday to Friday type contracts. So part-time working, job share, these are fairly commonly understood contracts, but we also have things like um, zero hours contracts, the gig economy that I talked about before. You'll have people working term time, condensed hours, and all sorts of other things that um, will be adapted and tailored to the needs of individual companies. Um, also, as I said before, the idea of people working from home, um, working remotely, if you do go into an office that is hot desking, so you don't have a dedicated workspace because you're not actually going to be um, in the workplace that much. So in the flexible working environment, you're talking about lots of different contracts to meet the needs of the business, but there is also an argument that by offering a much wider range of employment contracts and employment engagement conditions for workers, you're going to capture a much larger audience because you're going to cater for the needs of 
more diverse people, lots of different needs, lots of different environments, people coming from all sorts of different backgrounds. So you're giving them the flexibility, whereas before, perhaps if you were only offering a permanent full-time contract, you would not be able to employ people who perhaps have caring responsibilities and want to work at different hours or want to stagger their hours or don't want to work full time. So by doing this, you're giving yourself much more flexibility in terms of how you employ your staff. But it also means that potentially you're going to be able to deliver a better service to your customers as well. So moving on from that, the psychological contract. Um, again, there is a separate video on the psychological contract, but the psychological contract is about the relationship between the employer and the employee, and it's about establishing trust and making sure that the expectations are being met. So if you are forcing employees into atypical working contracts that they're not happy with, that they are they don't really want, but they feel forced to take, they're not going to be as engaged, they're not going to be committed. Um, so it's going to have a major impact on the organisation in a negative way. But if you are listening to the employees and the flexibility that is being offered meets the needs of those employees, then the theory suggests that those employees are more likely to buy into the company. They'll demonstrate discretionary behaviour. They'll go that extra mile. They'll do the, the extra little bit. They'll put in more work for you than they would under normal circumstances because they feel valued. They feel that they're important and they're being listened to and you're giving them what they need. So they'll they'll reciprocate you'll get something back from them because of that so the psychological contract in that situation you will have a happy employee which means more productivity more profit for the organization as well or better services happier customers as well so the psychological contract is really really important and that does link in as i said um, with productivity as well and the final slide which we'll go on to shortly is looking at high performance working and obviously if you've got highly engaged employees and you're giving them the right kind of working environment you're going to get much more out of them but what I want to think about as well is as I said at the beginning when we started thinking about flexibility in the workplace, it was back in the 1980s. And that was more concerned with part-time working, possibly job sharing, but not really much beyond that. Perhaps um, temporary contracts, fixed term contracts, those sorts of things. But over time, society changes, people's expectations change, workers start to change in terms of what they're expecting as well. And, you know, there are some things that are set down by law in the UK, certainly around about the right to work flexibly, to request flexible working from your employer if you have a young family or have caring responsibilities. Um, but bringing it up to date, we have a drive for this work-life balance and family-friendly policies within organisations. Most employees are looking for that when they're looking for work. Um, lots of debates around about the gig economy and the whole legal status of the people employed under gig economy contracts. And obviously that's something that is still ongoing. Um, worker intensification is the idea of, as I kind of highlighted already when I was talking about the psychological contract, if you have employees that are putting in more effort because they, they want to, they're driven to do that, they're motivated to do that, um, you also have to be careful that you don't end up with employees being burned out because they're, they're putting in too much effort and they're not switching off. So their work-life balance is actually suffering because they want to put in that extra effort because of the, the commitment that the company has shown them by giving them flexible working arrangements or whatever it is. 
So sometimes what what we find is that workers will actually feel compelled to work harder. Sometimes it can be that compulsion that's coming internally from the employees. But sometimes it can also be that someone, although they've gone from working five days a week to working three days a week, for example, feel that they still have to do five days worth of work in those three days. So they'll end up working over time or putting in ex- extra time. So worker intensive, work intensification is something we have to be really careful about. But as I say, some of it can be that people feel that they still have to do the same amount of work, but sometimes it can be a result of the commitment and engagement that the employee feels towards the organisation that they will voluntarily put in all this extra work, which potentially could also be damaging them, damaging their health. So it's something to watch out for. Agile working is a term that was that is used to describe this idea of remote working or hot desking where employees are not actually in the workplace for any great length of time. It doesn't necessarily mean that they have to be working from home. It could mean that they're out and about travelling a lot, um, but they don't have a dedicated base. And when they're not in the office, they may be working from home, but they could be out on different various sites doing all sorts of different tasks, whatever it is they've been employed to do. Obviously, because of COVID-19 and we're now, what, 10 months, almost 12 months down the line, and a lot of employees who are able to work from home are continuing to do that. They may be back in the workplace part of the time and some employees want to get back to work, want to get back into the workplace, but some don't. Some have actually realised that they're happier working from home or they want a balance. They want to spend part of the time working from home and part of the time back in the workplace. So this situation has been forced upon us because of COVID-19 and this is worldwide. But afterwards, employees well, perhaps not want to go back to the way they were working prior to COVID-19 um, and may start to look for something different from their employment relationships. So it's still very early days. We're not going to know what the, the future of the workplace is going to look like in perhaps five years time from now, once all of this is settled down again. But I think we have to be aware that it is unlikely that we will return to exactly the way things were before. Um, has the trust changed? You know, do employ a concern was always that employees worried that employees would not be working efficiently or effectively at home. Um, that's perhaps not been the case. It's obviously, I'm making generalizations and it will vary from employee to employee and perhaps sector, but has that changed the levels of trust between managers and the employees? You know, do managers now trust employees more to let them work from home? And is that something that will continue? So these are things that you perhaps need to think about a little bit in terms of how things might develop and where things might go from here. So as I said, a couple of slides back, flexibility and having a good, healthy psychological contract in the workplace is something that is going to be integral to creating high performance working and and a high performance work environment. It's not just about giving employees flexible working and having a healthy psychological contract. It's going to be tied up with other good HR practices, recruiting the correct type of people, Um, making sure you've got good reward systems in place, making sure that you're developing your employees. But the more you treat your employees with respect, trust them, put the right processes in place so that they will feel valued, they will feel that they're worthwhile, they will then be more engaged, they will then show more commitment to the organisation and you will get higher performance out of your employees. So flexibility, 
by showing your employees that they're trusted and that you value them will drive higher performance within the workplace as well. Um, I hope you found the video useful and thank you for listening.